Chapter 4, Season 4 is Fortnite's last resort. A brave and bold move called making the same season they did three years ago, but worse. Hello and welcome back to Creative in Review, the seasonal series where I talk about the additions to Fortnite Creative over the season and how good, bad, or just plain mid they were. Let's see what Epic's big guns were for last resort with 26.0. Chapter 4 Season 4 launched on August 25th, 2023 with an absolutely amazing season launch and while everyone else was having fun rocket ramming and vault heisting, I just had to see what was new for us creators. Some of the new weapons and items from Season 4 were added including the Red Dot Twin Mag Assault Rifle, Infiltrator Pump Shotgun which is weirdly a tech style pump shotgun and the Scoped Burst SMG? Okay, I don't hate this weapon, but it does sound like one of those mock scoped rocket launcher concepts from 2018 on Reddit. Then there's the Rocket Ram, a stupidly fun item that launches the player way up into the sky and sends them crashing back down through builds and through health bars. The Heist Bag is the newest container type. It drops a variety of heisting tools including the Rocket Ram, EMPs and remote explosives. It's a great set piece. The village buildings from the Citadel and similar POIs like Anvil Square join the castle buildings with a set of prefabs and galleries, offering a good amount of unique and high detail medieval style assets. Pieces from the Impostors prefabs and galleries were remade to be slightly more useful, although they're still missing all those cool props from the Impostors LTM, which is slightly disappointing. The new foliage mode was added to UEFN. You can paint flowers, grass patches, trees, and other forms of foliage across landscapes to quickly add detail to environments for a low cost. Cool stuff. Twenty six point ten was a mega update with enough additions to fill a city. You see where I'm going with this? That's right, Mega City was finally added as an absolutely mega set of prefabs and galleries, bringing the biggest POI in Fortnite history and its thousands of unique assets to creative mode, including some really pretty Sakura trees, awesomely detailed high-tech billboards and city assets, and so, so much more. While ziplines were available in UEFN since launch, the zipline device finally brought them to the legacy toolset for all creators to use. They work like grind rails, simplifying the spline system and making it really easy and quick to set up fun traversal features. Great addition, and it's also worth noting that in an AMA back in 2019, Epic said they didn't know if they'd ever be able to implement ziplines in creative. How far we've come? The accolade device finally arrived in UEFN, making it possible to set up XP rewards and other objective-based systems to incentivize players to play more. The sticky grenade launcher and shield breaker EMP from Season 4 were added in this update, with Weirdly being the last heist related items added during the heist season, one update in. Anyway, let's just move on. 26.20 launched on the 6th anniversary of Fortnite Battle Royale. So what did BR get? Uh, another Star Wars collab. Yay. Anyway, Creative got the 6th birthday cake prop and the birthday present item was updated with a new pink design for 2023. The Nitro Fine getaway car from Last Resort was added with variants for Kado Thorn and the Pizza Pit, making it the first vehicle to have built-in variants that changed the model. Looking at you, Taxi. It's a really great vehicle that functions similarly to the Nitro Drifter with drifting boosts and clutch control. The Century turrets introduced in Battle Royale way back in Chapter 2 Season 2 finally arrived in Creative as the all automated turret device. Ignoring the absurdly high memory cost, this is a pretty cool device that is certainly long overdue. This update also introduced the ability to upload custom lobby backgrounds, which is just a really cool feature for creative customization and making every map feel its own, rather than just part of Fortnite. 26.30 brought spooky surprises for Fortnite Mares 2023, and Creative definitely shared in the Halloween love this year. The Eclipsed Estates POI was added as a set of prefabs and a set of galleries, bringing last resort props to Creative. A fantastic and surprisingly speedy addition, 
This update really took me by surprise, but I'm certainly not complaining. More last resort weapons and items join the creative inventory. This includes the Toggle Zoom Tactical DMR, the cute little Crash Pad Junior, and the Super Suave Business Turret. Some items from Fortnite Mares new and old were added, including the brand new Thorns Vampiric Blade, a siphon enabled mythic kinetic blade, the wood stake shotgun and its high stakes mythic variant, giving my gal Joni some in game rep, and the witch broom? Yeah, the witch broom from Fortnite Mares 2020 finally got added. Three years late, but hey, better than never, right? The forced upgrades to version 2 devices occurred in this update. Version 2 devices were buggy as hell when they were introduced back in Season 1, but those bugs have largely been ironed out, so unlike the event binding update, this update is pretty good and it just adds a ton of customization options to some devices. Creator pages were introduced on update day, giving every Fortnite creator their own page on the Fortnite.com website, including me! Creators can customise what maps to show, the order they show in, and even add a banner image in social links. It's really cool. The big Fortnite UI update, which applies to Discover and some creative elements, occurred in this update, and I, I hate it. I, I'm sorry, it's bad. They swapped the side of several UI elements, including the play button, the friends list, and this entire menu in-game, which just messes up years of muscle memory and had no real reason to be changed. The buttons are all rounded and grey. Discover is somehow even more cluttered and creeps onto the main lobby now, but does it show epic maps first? Oh no, you still have to scroll through several layers of slop just to find Battle Royale. And why is it all purple? Purple is my favourite colour, but Fortnite's entire brand and colour scheme is blue. Every other menu is blue. Why is this one different? Th this is bad. Oh, and they removed Legacies, the achievement system introduced in Chapter 2. There's something so ironic about literally removing a feature called Legacy as you burn away player records and replace the iconography of your game with a generic corporate mess. <sighs> okay. Rant over. Yeah, yeah, safe to say I'm not the biggest fan of this change. The 26.30 update also technically brought the save point device to UEFN, but it was almost immediately disabled until being re-added on October 18th in a hotfix. Save persistence in UEFN. Finally. With the save point, creators can now finally save player data including inventories, statistics and more in UEFN Islands. This is of course a great and long overdue addition. That's Fortnite's last resort. Yeah, it feels like this season flew past with only a few updates, but there was actually quite a lot of content hidden within these updates. From several new POIs, to long awaited devices, to questionable UI updates. Regardless, I think it was a pretty solid season for creative and I am happy to give last resort a 7 out of 10, all things considered. And next time, we're going OG.